Yesterday. Yes, yes, that's right. Yep. Oh, Lou break. I'm in Mount Fuji, Mount Fuji Lou, and I'm going to a peculiar forest. Here's my two day pass, which doubles as a postcard. Amazing. What value? I just got told off. I got on the bus eating my, I think it's a croquette, and I was mid mouthful and I had to stop eating. And I had to put the remainder of the croquette in a plastic bag and I had to tie it up. They're very apologetic, but they're very insistent, so that will teach me to flout the rules. Oh, good really. So I've got to wait till I get to the back cave, I know, until I uh, actually uh, can eat it. Can eat it. When I said we were going to the bat cave, you probably thought I was bananas, but look, I'll prove it, look. See, the bat cave. We're at the bat cave. We're at a bat cave in Japan. It's called Psycho Bat Cave, but they haven't spelt psycho right. They spelt it S-A-I-K-O, and we know it's P-I-P-Y-S-P-S-Y-H-C. We don't spell it the same, do we? Anyway, so here I am in a place called Psycho. Uh, they've got a bat cave, and this is the beginning of the mysterious forest. <laughs> After a rather long conversation with the lady on the desk who Bless her, her English isn't quite as good as mine. <laughs> she was pointing out that bats sleep in the daytime and I was just saying, well, can I go in the bat cave anyway? And we finally realized that's what I meant. And then she said, no, sorry, 12.30 crows. So they closed the bat cave. Probably Batman's doing a bit of cleaning or maybe catching up on his admin, I don't know. Anyway, we're going on this mysterious forest walk now. <laughs> I, uh, I really like what they've done with the path. They've kept it very, very natural. They haven't put loads of gravel and tarmac and stuff on it. I think it's really, it's really pleasant, but I can still hear the traffic roaring in the distance. If they turn that off, this would be perfect, but it's very good. I'm enjoying this walk. Quite a lot of these potential hobbit hovels in this mossy environment. God, that would be such fun when you were a kid, wouldn't it? To be able to get down and play in that. What a great playground. I'm a bit big for that now. I haven't seen another human since I've been on this walk, so I like that too. I like that a lot. This is reminding me somewhat of a really lovely wood I went to near Gloucester. I think it's north of Gloucester, Forest of Dean. Forest of Dean. It's called Puzzle Wood and it's got old Iron Age leftovers from Roman days. It's great, but it's like this. You feel like a fairy could jump out at any moment. But it's lovely. It's tangled and beautiful. I, I, yeah. Anyway, Puzzle Wood, if you're in the Forest of Dean or near that, go nip up there. I'm in Japan. Oh, overexposure, I love it. This is a uh, tree, it's about, I reckon it's about 300 years old. There's a few of these around here. Cypress tree, and look at its branches. Right out, I mean its roots, its roots, roots, branches go out. Look, look, its roots go right out there. There's a reason for that, which I'll, uh, I might tell you about later. I'm still trying to, yeah, tell you about it later. If you come on this walk and you're silly enough to forget to bring your raincoat or your umbrella, like I am, then there's a one here, there's a one, a cave here, where you could shelter from the rain, because look, it's quite a, quite a big one, isn't it? I'm going to clamber down a little bit, but it is mossy and stuff, but let's just see if I can get in the cave a bit, have a look at it. That's our view to the outside world. This cave, it's got this great sound. It's just a completely dead. Oh, 
sound. And the floor, I don't know if this is going to come out, it's lava. Look, it's lava. And that's something I was going to say about this area. But I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to look at all these very, look at that. Atmospheric, isn't it? Lovely moss. Where's the heater? So something that's terribly, terribly important to this area is this. Geologically, it's quite unusual because all the trees are resting on top of lava. Yeah, and they can't, they can't get through the lava, so their roots, they can't go deep. They can't go deep, they go sideways. And that's why you get lots of this. And this. Look at the colours in this bark. That's fantastic. I don't think I've... I can't remember seeing anything like this before, but that is absolutely great colours. Well done, tree. Look, more of that plastic wood stuff. Bizarre, isn't it, when they've got all this real wood here. The whole notion of going somewhere special to commit suicide, what's that about? Is that a, a need for ritual? Is that somehow, if you're going to do it, then you don't chicken out because you make a deal that you're going to go to that place and do that thing? I mean, in the UK, it's beachy head. If you hurl yourself off there, you're guaranteed to, to die. There's the um, Golden Gate Bridge. People jump off there. That apparently is the, that's the one where most people jump off. Uh, this place, I think, is second. Beachy Head's not up there with the top ones, but then again, we've got a smaller population. Pro Rata, I think it's the most suicide spot, most suicidey spot in the world. There, that's the way to put it. The most suicidey spot in the world, Beachy Head. They've got a Samaritan's office opposite, they used to have, opposite the main area. So just at the last minute, you've got somebody going, hang on, hang on, if you want it. And although I haven't seen any, I hear that the Japanese police and authorities put lots of signs up in these woods saying things like, think about your parents, call the police now, please stop, that kind of thing. But I haven't seen any. I think the Japanese authorities are probably keen to try and rid this place of its reputation and just turn it back into a beautiful nature reserve because that's actually what it is. It's a lovely, lovely slice of forest. It's beautifully, oh, it's just lovely to hear that the paths are great. I've seen no people. Um, it's very natural. Lovely bird sound, a little bit of wind in the trees. It's all good stuff. So to get rid of that suicide forest moniker makes sense. So they don't any longer release official uh, figures for the suicides here. There's an estimate, but of course estimates are only estimates. Um, but some of the people who work here, they have rather unfortunate duties. If they find a body, it's up to them to take the body back and to stay with it for a night. Because if you don't stay with the body, then its spirit will cry out forevermore. Or so I'll check that out and find out. Um, But basically, what I read, I don't know if it's true, is they play, the, the staff play that um, rock, scissors, stone, paper thing to see who has to stay in the room with the dead body to look after it through the night until it's picked up. Huh. I think it's lovely. I think it's absolutely lovely here. To me, it just feels like going for a stroll through the woods near where I live, except they're not, they're, they're, they're not, I'm not going to say they're not as pretty as this. Trees and everything are pretty, but the pathways are better here and the lack of people is good. And people with big dogs going at you, you don't get that here so much either. Look at all of these little hobbit holes. Do you think if I shouted, come out? Anybody would? Many moons ago, I was a rep from Max Factor. I used to sell makeup and perfume, hence my look. And uh, I was Max Factor's man of the year one time. I won a, I got a little cup and I got 350 quid. That was all right. In those days, that was a lot of money, believe me. We brought out a new range of, you know, makeup because the world always needs a new range of makeup. And they had all these wonderful names. I can't remember the names. Really, really inventive, amazing names. And I said something to my boss. I said, 
I said, you know that one there, you know, whatever it's called, what was it called? Triangulated Sienna, or so I don't know. He said, yeah. I said, does it not look a little bit like shit brown to you? And everyone guffawed. And he said, I think you'll find, John, it probably is shit brown, but they've just chosen to call it Triangulated Sienna. So you see what I'm saying? Give it a new name. So if you stop publishing the figures for this place and you stop referring to it as Suicide Forest, I've seen nothing since I've been here even talking about that. The only uh, things that are referenced in the literature I've seen and the maps and so on are come and look round our beautiful forest. And in a few years, that's what it'll become. What's in a name? That's why I changed my name from Cynthia. Not having any real knowledge of Japanese mythology and ritual beliefs and so on, possibly there's some connection between coming here to top yourself, because if this is where other people have done it, perhaps their spirits lead you the way or something, I don't know. But I think another aspect of it is, of course, if you wanted to do it somewhere lovely, if you wanted to just come out and pass away in some beautiful countryside, well, this would do the trick, won't it? This is, this is it, you know. So maybe that's it. I'm guessing that the tourism around, oh, bloody thing, around here, around Mount Fuji is about Mount Fuji and the lakes and going out on lake rides and boat rides. And I suppose it's geared perhaps toward, towards an older generation, I don't know. Lovely place to relax, five beautiful lakes great big incredible mountain to see which is cloaked in cloud today i've not seen a single person since i set out on the trail possibly i'm as deep into the woods as you go now without going out because you know that thing you can only ever walk halfway into the woods because then you're walking out and i can't hear any traffic i can hear the wind in the trees can you hear bird song? No traffic. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. <laughs> 